Excellent. What's up guys, how's it going? And welcome back to Paul's Hardware. Today's video is very special because I have the Fractal Define R6. It is one better than the Define R5 and it maintains their pirate theme, which kind of confuses me. But um, anyway, they also have some add-ons and accessories that go with it. So I'll be opening this mysterious package as well as this mysterious package. I'm gonna do a build in this system or in this case today and I'll give you guys a feedback review on the build process. So ease of building. And also of course, I will go over the features for you. Since I have done a lot of work with the Define R5, like in my epic water-cooled system back there in the background, I'm gonna be comparing it to that for the most part, but that's enough for an intro. Let's get this thing out of the box. Right, knife go. Oh, I got the white one. Wow. wow. Yeah, did you see it? Yeah. You should do you should zoom in on that and yeah. do a little All right, first impression. Uh, this is the Maju Vent version 3, I believe. They've been using Maju Vents and uh, the idea is that the Maju Vent pops off and uh, you can you can replace it with a mesh pad part. But it doesn't seem to be securing itself quite all. All right, I'll probably need to get internal here and see if there's something blocking it. All right, uh, I gotta get inside here. So tempered glass side panel, all one piece of tempered glass and not held on with any screws. Uh, just supposed to snap in there and pop off. And again, oh, 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 yay. Oh, good job, Fractal. All right, I like this. Basically, they put a metal frame inside the tempered glass. So very similar to the mod that I did. Not exactly similar, but you have the metal frame that goes around the outside, so it sticks on a little bit more traditionally. There is a catch point right here at the back that it will snap this little nub right here into. But, um, oh, and at the bottom. But other than that, you just gotta kind of put that piece in, snaps on. That's beautiful. I love it. And then if you wanna secure it, uh, you got a couple thumb screws. Also gives you an edge to hold it by so you don't get fingerprints all over the tempered glass. Opposite side panel, very, very similar in uh, construction sturdiness as well as uh, feels nice and quiet because you got a big. Uh, rubber pad there to do some sound dampening. Uh, yeah, seems like they're sticking with the traditional fractal build quality there as far as nice thick steel. And a little, just, just the tiniest bit of flex. Not bad at all. That's what it is. Yeah. All right, now we need to correct that I'm an idiot. But come around to the other side. It's not the side to film from. Bad job. Okay, I figured out how the, the Maju Vent 3 works up here, and just to clarify, the little uh, piece popping up was more, probably just happened in shipping. There's a button back here, actually a decently substantially sized button, and that's what lo uh, actually locks it into place. So little tabs right there, slide in, and then push in the button, and it should pop down. Now it's, now it's staying. Now it's staying, just like it should. And then if we push the button here, it pops up and we can remove it. And again, metal on top, and then they got some plastic reinforcement going on just underneath that. And if you want to just have the dust filtration, you remove the middle by an easy process that I haven't figured out yet. Ah, ha ha, ha ha. Good timing, Joe. Had to double check the manual just because I didn't want to force anything here uh, without knowing what how it was supposed to work, but Supposed to start on this edge, and you can pop off the metal piece. Ah. Ever so gently. There we go. Now, one thing I'm gonna say that I'm already noticing with this piece is that there is absolutely a very thin spot right in the middle, which has already tried to bend on me a couple times. So it's not terrible by any stretch. This is just a pretty much an aesthetic cover for the top, and it'll block some noise as well, because there is more sound dampening on there. Just bear in mind, where these little cutouts right here, it's tried to bend there on me a couple times. So especially when removing it from this piece, uh, just try not to put too much flex on that part of it. Nice piece. 
peel. It's a sexy peel. Found that very appealing. Was that a peel of thunder? All right, I've been able to give a quick once over of some of the features and everything here. So I think I'm ready to share some of that with you. I uh, wanted to start off with some of the stuff that is kind of carried over from the Define series leading up till now. One is that there's dust filtration everywhere. So um, other than the rear exhaust, which is an exhaust, so typically wouldn't need dust filtration. So right up here at the front, there's a full length dust filter and uh, the door, by the way, is also reversible. They're maintaining that as well from the Define R5. So there's latches on the other side. You can remove it if you want it to open the other direction. And then right down here at the bottom, you can reach in and pull out a full length filter and that covers the entire bottom of the case. So it's gonna keep dust from intake fans you might have down here at the bottom. There's also a room for up to a 280 millimeter radiator down there up at the bottom. So uh, if you put that, if you're setting this up for water cooling, you can do that as well. Uh, also it's gonna cover your power supply intake fan too. So that is pretty nice. Also inside the front door right here, there is another dust filter. And this one does also have some slats on it and that is just to uh, redirect uh, some of the noise. So behind that, you can see the front uh, fan mounts and it does come with three uh, Fractal Design 140 millimeter uh, fans. Just double checking the manual, I realized that um, another part of this top Maju vent cover, once removed, is that there's a tray underneath it. The tray can also be removed uh, and that will, it's right now it's got a couple screws that are holding it in place. But this of course is modular up to 420 millimeter uh, radiators can fit up in top right there. And they put a little space right here for a fill port. That's something that I modified and added on to my Define R5. So they're really, really making this the great equalizer here. All right, I was briefly distracted, but Behind that dust filter, you can see a couple of the included Fractal Design fans. They are Fractal Design Dynamic X2 GP14, 140 millimeter fans. They uh, pre-installed two as intakes there in the front, and then there's a third 140 millimeter exhaust in the back. Also continuing from the Define R5 is the fact that you have a five and a quarter inch bay up here at the top. Five and a quarter inch bays, you know, some cases have decided that those just aren't a thing anymore, but a lot of people uh, still use them for various things uh, reservoirs, uh, fan controllers. Uh, there's, there's plenty of good uses for a five and a quarter inch base. So nice to have that at the top, especially considering that uh, it's very flexible. If you decide you don't need it, you can pretty much remove the brackets that uh, mount it up and everything and still get access to all that. Now, when you're looking at uh, this case from the front here, just wanted to point out the radiator support. Once again, you can do a 120, a 140, a 240 or a 280 down at the bottom front uh, on the front. On the front front, uh, you can do uh, 120, 140, 240, 280, or 360. And then across the top, you can do 120, 140, 240, 280, 360, or all the way up to 420, dude, 420. Pretty nice. Now, one of the features of this case that I was most impressed with when I first got it out of the box and just started taking it apart was how these side panels go on. And basically, they're held on with a couple thumb screws, like your traditional side panels. And then beyond that, they just pop off. It's got a little nubs at the top and bottom at the back, go into a couple clasps here. And that is uh, not the same mounting mechanism as a Define R5, but it is similar. And then again, I really like that they've gone with a metal frame around this tempered glass piece to give you something to hold on to, make it a bit more substantial. I have to imagine it makes the tempered glass a little bit stronger too, maybe a little bit more structural integrity. I'm assuming that, so don't, you know, I could be wrong. With the side panel off though, you might notice that this is a little bit longer from front to back than last time. And that is to help support the ability to have either a bunch of drives up here in the front, or you can remove this panel and uh, more on that when I actually get to removing that in order to allow you to put either a bunch of drives in the configuration that it's in right now. And you can maybe see back through there some of the drive caddies that are pre-installed, or you can remove that completely and just open this space up to give you a little bit more room for much thicker radiators or potentially uh, a water cooling reservoir or pump, that kind of thing. Now an added feature for the Define R6 is the vertical uh, GPU mount they've added right here. So you got two uh, PCIe slot covers right there. And this actually is listed as a two and a half slot. Uh, it can fit up to two and a half slot graphics cards. Bear in mind, uh, as was dem demonstrated by Dimitri with some recent testing on Hardware Connects, 
When you've got the vertically mounted GPU here, there's a potential for conflict with airflow. I'm not gonna be doing temperature testing today, but I highly recommend checking that video out as he does some testing with various cases. But it's good to know that they've listed it as a two and a half slot gap here. That does potentially mean that there might be a little bit more space between your graphics card and the tempered glass to allow a little bit more air in. Now you will need a PCIe ex expansion cable, uh, ribbon cable, and they have sent me along one of them. This has been named the Flex VRC25. Uh, basically it's just a little ribbon cable for PCI Express and uh, it's got a rigid mount there at the bottom and that actually has a couple corresponding mounting holes here on the power supply shroud and then of course the rest of it would right up there and plug into your motherboard. And it's actually got a nice bit of sleeving here on the cable with a Fractal Design logo too. So that would look pretty clean. This is gonna cost you $40 as an add-on upgrade item, um, which I think is reasonable for this because buying a high quality PCI Express ex uh, extension cable like this will cost you about 40 bucks anyway. And it's good to know that you can get one that is automatically gonna be compatible and will mount to your case and give you a nice mounting point for your graphics card and everything. That should be available uh, in January of 2018. Now, when I was doing the initial unboxing, I already kind of showed you guys this top uh, Modivent 3 piece, uh, the plastic pr protective dust filter there, as well as the metal piece that can go on top of it. I like that they've added this metal piece on top. I think it's a lot uh, more classy than a plastic piece covering up there. So it will give you a nice enclosed feel if you leave that on. Uh, however, you can of course remove the metal that will give you just the airflow through. And then there is a uh, radiator bracket up here. It's just held on by a, a couple screws. You can pop that out to mount your radiator outside of the case, which is very convenient. And then again, up to 420 millimeter rad support, as well as a pre-drilled out fill port, uh, which I think is pretty nice to have, as that's a, the top of the case is a good place to put a fill port. All right, let's flip around here to the back and pop the back panel off. Ah, oh, yes, just like that. And this will give you guys a better look at the business end, so to speak. First off, let's quickly pop out one of these little hard drive caddy trays. There you go, an all metal tray. These will support 2.5 inch or 3.5 inch drives. Uh, and it's got uh, just a couple little prongs that plug into the end down there. And then a single uh, captive thumb screw to actually secure it in place. Uh, it doesn't look like these have rubber, damp uh, rubber mounts on the place where the caddy meets the, the uh, drive cage, but they do still have little rubber grommets uh, to mount up your 3.5 inch drive to provide a little bit of vibration dampening there if, uh, if you do a 3.5 inch drive in there. Also really nice uh, that if you are configuring a system uh, with, I would guess, air cooling and lots of drive support, uh, there's just tons of these drives in here. So they've included six of these drive trays, but as you can probably see, there's uh, one, two, three, 11. It looks like there's 11 actual mounts. So I'm not sure if Fractal is going to be selling these drive trays individually, but like if you did a bunch of 2.5 inch SSDs in there or something like that, there's a lot of different configurations you could do. Uh, it's also nice uh, as far as positioning goes for 3.5 inch drives, which can heat up and which you often want to space out from each other a bit to have them right here, right behind the front intake fans. And also again, just the modular positioning uh, available so you can move those around to best suit your needs depending on where you have the other hardware in the system. Those are not the only drive mounts though. There are two more 2.5 inch drive mounts right here. And if you were to set this up in water cooling mode where you remove that front piece and all these trays, uh, that does limit you on storage space, but it comes with a couple of these and you can mount them behind uh, the motherboard tray as they come pre-installed right there. Or if you have some SSDs that you wanna show off, there's actually a couple mounting points right here on the uh, power supply shroud as well, or so I am told. I believe, yeah, you can just slot them in like that and secure them down with the screw. I also want to point out that this has a two-tone color scheme, very similar to a lot of uh, Fractal's cases, but this is available in a variety of colors. So I have the black and white version, as you can see here. Very, very distinct two-tone black and white uh, with the black brushed metal uh, piece on the front versus the pretty much white everywhere else except for some black accents. Also available in a gunmetal finish and then also available as a black with the white accents that you might uh, be a little bit more familiar with from the Define R5 series, or available in a blackout version that's all black with black hardware as well. So 
you can get the blackest black fractal case that you have ever wanted. Beyond that, inside, uh, you've got these grommets for routing cable management, and I kind of like the hex design on those. Uh, they also seem pretty sturdy and like they're going to stay in place. You got them at the top, a couple on the sides, and then uh, one down here at the back, which would be very useful for routing uh, cables out to a graphics card, for example. And rounding out things here on the back uh, cable management area, I do like that Fractal has continued to use a fair amount of uh, pretty smartly positioned uh, tie-down points. So you got a couple up here at the top, a couple down here on the right side, uh, and then of course you still have the pre-installed Velcro straps for your main uh, business of routing cables up this center area right here. And then an add-on that uh, we haven't seen before is this little central fan hub right there. So this will get power via a SATA port, and then you can route this plug over to your motherboard, uh, and that can allow you to have PWM control. You actually have three PWM plugs here for PWM controllable fans, and then you have six three-pin uh, fan connections for standard three-pin fans. All right, guys, I've decided to go with the open version of this, so I really quickly wanted to show you guys how to convert it. It looks like it only takes about six screws. Uh, there's a couple here at the top. They do all appear to be your standard Phillips head design. Uh, there's a couple more here on the front, and I did have to remove the front panel. So there's one there, one over here. And then on the bottom, these are the rails for the uh, dust filter, and there's a couple gaps to get to the two on the bottom. <laughs> and then it just falls, it just falls in. <laughs> yeah. But hey, look, we have now removed this panel. And now, look how much room there is. Ta-da! So here's where you can see like massive thick radiators, push-pull configurations, uh, lots of lots of room to work with up there in the front now. Uh, and that's how we're gonna leave it for the rest of the build. Here's a real quick rundown of the parts I'm gonna be installing, guys. Uh, this was supposed to be an 8700K. I can't locate my 8700K. I'm sure it's somewhere, but it's an 8400K for our intents and purposes, for, for all intents and purposes, it's the same thing. I'm gonna cool it with a Cryorig H7 Quad Lumi. Haven't used that before. Uh, got an Oris Z370 Oris Ultra Gaming motherboard. This one I've used before for some benchmark testing. Does a fine job. Just gonna stick with this uh, Toshiba TR200 SSD that I used in the uh, H400i build that I did recently as well. Corsair Dominator Platinum 32 gig memory kit. And then we've got an EVGA GeForce GTX 1070 Ti, which I have neglected to use yet. So I figured this has a bit of blinginess on it and would be a good uh, option for that uh, vertical GPU mount. And finally, for our power supply, we got the EVGA 650GQ. Let's get started. Quick random shout out for my favorite, my favorite tie down point in this case so far. Look at that. Above, this is above the IO shield slot right there. And I'm trying to just kind of tuck this cable for the, the fan back up and around so it's not visible. Look, there's a little catch right there. It's focused, I'm not focused. A little focus. See, I, I need to find manual focus on this. Didn't really show accessories much, but uh, you get a little fractal wipey cloth. You get a little, uh, little nut to tighten down your motherboard standoffs. Always convenient to have that. And you have individually packaged screws uh, for mounting the various things and a little co collection of zip ties. So the basics that you would expect. Oh look, extra thumb screws. I like that.
So let's do some closing notes. And the first thing I'm gonna mention is actually something I haven't mentioned yet, which is the front panel IO. I am happy that Fractal has maintained two USB 3 and two USB 2.0 ports. I actually do like having a couple USB 2.0 ports up there so you can plug in stuff that doesn't need a lot of bandwidth like a mouse or a keyboard really quick. I think that's convenient. However, it is lacking when it comes to the Type-C connection, uh, especially if you want USB 3.1 Gen 2. That is one of the modifications that I added onto the Define R5 I've got back there. So I would feel a little weird about it if my old and modified Define R5 had better features than this one, but fear not, Fractal does have a piece that you can order from them, again, coming in Q1 of 2018, basically replaces that entire front panel unit up there. It's gonna cost you $30, so it's kinda, like I'm kind of on the fence about that. It's 30 bucks to add USB Type-C 3.1 Gen 2, which is nice to have, but it's 30 bucks. I've seen cables itself for like 15 bucks, so uh, I don't know. That's something that I do feel should have just been included by default. Now pricing on these cases is 130 bucks if you're gonna get the non-tempered glass version and 150 bucks for the tempered glass version. So I do feel like the pricing is pretty fair for the case itself, but I wish that type C connector was included just for the default base price. Although it is nice that you can upgrade to it. And I guess for folks who don't have that connector on their motherboard, um, you do still have the option to go without it, I guess. Now the flat PCI ribbon cable, uh, I do feel like was a good choice to make an add-on piece because not everyone is gonna wanna position their graphics card right here. Again, it's very much a visual thing. It might impact the cooling performance of your graphics card. I haven't tested that directly in this case, so I don't wanna say that outright right now. But again, I'll link to the Hardware Connects video where they did some more testing on that. It might potentially, depending on where you mount them out stuff in, in the front here, conflict with one of those SSD mounting points. Uh, you can fit an SSD in the second mounting point right there, so there's some back and forth there. And then you are definitely blocking most of your PCI Express expansion slots, so, you know, it's, it's really one of those uh, form over function things or vice versa, depending on how you want to set it up. But of course, if you don't want to do that, just don't buy the ribbon cable, install your graphics card normally. But I will say, at least visually, it looks pretty nice having it right here. And that pretty much sums up my first impression of the Define R6 here. Um, I do want to mention also that it supports EATX motherboards, so you can fit a wider size motherboard in there as well. Um, it might block a little bit of the uh, pass-through grommets for your cable management, but you know, it, it does support that. Uh, I want to point out that there's a lot of blank space up here in the front right now. So this is a larger case that's made for install installation of more hardware. If you compare it, for example, to the Fractal Meshify uh, C, uh, that case I could fit this exact same layout of hardware in, and it's a good, you know, six inches shorter, I feel like. So saves a little bit more space on your desk. However, for people who are looking to build a system that has a lot of storage, or a system that has a lot of expansion and a lot of area for adding um, water cooling components. I think Fractal has done a great job as far as the layouts. I like all the radiator support going on everywhere. And the only thing I think that we might have uh, to come back to is maybe a second opinion on that all black front panel piece right there. And then also that is completely covering, completely blocking the front intake. So you do only have the intake via the side uh, vents right here and a little bit at the bottom. Now I have not tested that directly, so we'll have to come back to that in the future, but time will tell if that's actually causing any detriment to the front intake and airflow on the case. Now I happen to know that there are probably a few other YouTubers out there who also have made videos on the Define R6, so I think I'm gonna hunt some of them down because I believe they might have had the other colors. If you guys wanna check out the gray or the black or the black with white accents. So if I find some reputable YouTubers, I'll post links to their videos down in the comments. All in all, I think Fractal did a really good job with this case. Uh, I do think it's a little bit more expensive than it was last time around, but they've added value when it comes to the expandability as well as the flexibility, making this a very suitable home for a workstation, for a gaming PC, for a combination PC editing, lots of storage, or for an all out water cooled build as well. But guys, that's gonna wrap it up for this video. Definitely hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed it, and I'll post links to this as soon as I can find it available for sale down in the description below. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.